Hey guys, Chris at the Oddmer Recycler. Here's a large and very heavy uh, old school uh, copier, office copier, commercial sort of one. It's super heavy. Um, it actually weighs, I just managed to tip it on its edge onto the bathroom scales and it weighs about 90 kilos. Uh, so it's a two man lift job. But you may be wondering how I got it up onto my little table here. And uh, the secret is a milk crate. Uh, have a look at this footage I took just to show you that a middle-aged guy with a dodgy hip and crook shoulders can lift a 90 kilo copier up onto the workbench and it's just a matter of remembering my physics and leveraging rolling it onto the milk crate and rolling it up to the table and it's actually really no effort when you when you have a go at something like that so um, there's always a way if you think about it. In my younger days I would have just tried to pick the thing up and probably done myself an injury. You now I'm getting a bit older. You kind of think about things and there's always a way to do something. So now that it's up on the bench, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrap it out. Um, it's a 1990s model I think or thereabouts. So I did see a little service card inside that had uh, 1995 and 1994 I think service dates. Uh, it's got a lot of interesting stuff in there. There's plenty of wiring. Uh, there's obviously a cover missing off the back. It looks like some pretty cool boards in there. Mid-grade board. There's just a power board. There's a fan. These old copiers and larger printers can actually have some pretty good electronics in them. I've seen them with uh, actually having RAM and a hard drive. So they're worth, they're worth it to a degree. Depends what you want to get out of these things. There's a lot of work in pulling them apart. And in this video, I'm actually going to show you what I can rescue out of this copier. Uh, if we sent it off as pressing steel, as dirty pressing steel, which some yards would take this thing, because there's a lot of steel in it, uh, at, at 90 kilos, we're going to get, we're almost going to get 20 bucks. Oh, no, we're not. not at clean, that would be clean price. Dirty price, we're probably only going to get about $10. So not really worth it in my view to take it down certainly from here for me i've got a quite a drive down to melbourne to get rid of this stuff so i actually don't take dirty pressing steel down there i take it out to our transfer station where i can drop it off for nothing but what i'm going to do with this video is scrap out this copier show you what i can salvage show you what value i think i'm going to get um, i'm interested in a lot of the hardware too you can see there's chains and sprockets and solenoids um, there's lots of springs. I actually sell those through the shop. There's going to be a fair bit of wire. There's, obviously, there's going to be circuit boards. I'm not sure what else we're going to find. I can't say I've actually scrapped one of these out before. There's certainly going to be a bit of plastic and a bit of rubbish. But, um, yeah, I'm not going to uh, tackle it today. I just put it up on the bench. It's going to rain here shortly. So I'll put a cover over it and I'll set up the camera soon and we'll start scrapping and see what we can get out of it. So I've got half an hour spare today. I just thought I'd start on this copier and see how far we can get. So I've pulled the top bracket off. I'm going to take the covers off. Uh, I can tell you now that it's not going to be worth pulling down to the extent that I'm going to. Uh, there's a lot of work involved just pulling little bits down for very little value. But I'm curious to see exactly how much hardware I get out of it. Uh, I've already got a tub of screws and springs. I've got a pile, I'm going to make a pile of clean plastic to be recycled and then there's other plastics which are contaminated uh, which will have to go to landfill. Uh, just got this control panel section off here and have a look at all these screws. I've just started one end and they're small screws so I've got to use a hand screwdriver. Look at them, hundreds of them, well almost, feels like it. Anyway, I don't expect there's going to be a lot on this board because it's really just going to be switches and things. But I want to scrap this thing right out to see what's in it. So we'll do the tedious stuff as well. And I'll check in every half hour or so and give you an update rather than just set up the camera. And you, I'm sure you don't want to watch me undo screws uh, until everyone falls asleep. So I'll check in after I've done maybe about half an hour today. So first half hour down. I haven't really got very far into it. Um, but I'm taking things apart as I go uh, and I'm getting a few bits and pieces. Now I've got a box here just for all the clean pressing steel. It will add up to quite a bit of weight. Uh, there's going to be a few bits of stainless steel amongst it which I'll get out with a magnet later. Uh, there's one heavier piece over here so I'll stack those up separately. Uh, now I found a couple of fans. These seem to be in good order. They spin 
nice and freely. Uh, I don't have an immediate use for them, but I've um, unplugged them so they're undamaged. They're both 100 volt. Um, so, look, they're going to... I, as I said, I don't have a use for them, but I think they'll still be saleable. Uh, anyone that's doing a bit of inventing or something, it's certainly not hard to get a voltage supply of 100 volts. Uh, they've got all their brackets, they'll mount up fine. So I think there's better value in those than what there would be for scrap because you've only got a small electric motor at one end. Uh, look, even if I just get $5 each for those through the shop, you know, there's $10 and I'm, I'm only half an hour into it, so that's all right. Um, I can see in this side, there's actually a nice circuit board on this side with lots of chips on it. We'll get into that next time. Um, I've just really been undoing brackets and screws. There wasn't a lot of point in, in filming it, I don't think. But I've got a tub here of hardware building up, uh, a nice big rocker switch, and I do sell those too. I'm getting a bit of a pile of wire. I'm not going to worry about chopping the plugs off. It's only fine wire, so it'll probably just go in the, the low-grade bucket. So anyway, I'll, um, I'll report in after another session. It won't be today. I've got to pack up and go home now. All right, see you soon. It's the next day now, and I've invested another half an hour in dismantling this copier. Um, it's rather therapeutic pulling things apart. I enjoy that, especially when I've never done one before. So what do we got? We'll just sum it up. We've got our box of clean pressing steels getting quite large. Uh, we've pulled out some of the boards. I didn't mention in the last section the control board. As I said, mostly switches. Uh, there are a couple of IC chips, but it, it would only be a low-grade board. So in hindsight, if I was doing a few of these, I certainly wouldn't pull that panel off with all those screws. But I'll leave those chips off the rest and go to the transfer station. Uh, there's one board here which will go as a mid-grade board. So we'll put that separate. The other boards I've pulled off so far are really just power-grade boards. Uh, I'll leave the transformer, some of the coils off there, but really there's not much value there. Um, now the fan I got off it, I'm actually, I think that's a saleable piece. It's a cast aluminium housing. It's not a normal plastic one, so it's got a fair bit of weight to it. Uh, and it's rated at 100 volts, so it's a bit different to your normal PC fans. Uh, I think I'll get something for that. Also, this was the a drive motor that drove the cables there's a bit of a cable there that operated the mechanism back and forward when you're actually scanning something for a copy so I've kept this intact uh, it's got the short wiring loom with it but it's nicely geared you can see there's a worm drive gear in there so I'm not sure what the RPM of the motor is but it would be nice and slow operating this pulley and it still operates fairly smoothly uh, it's a 24 volt DC motor, so to someone that likes inventing or tinkering, that's got to be a really handy little piece. I reckon I'd put 10 bucks on that if I don't use it myself. Uh, so let's scan around. I also pulled this little section out where the mains power went in, only because it's a nice little sort of unit here, a little uh, compact assembly where you've got a connector block, a couple of inline fuses, and then power out. So it may be a handy little module to use in a project as well. So perhaps not much to sell that one, but I might even keep that up. might be handy when I'm making something. All right, we'll scan around. As you can see, there's still a bulk of this copier left. I've got a bit further in the top there. Um, I've got quite a lot further in this side. There's a lot of um, sprockets and chains and things. Uh, the wiring loom, I'm not snipping willy-nilly. I'm actually unplugging everything just in case I want to take a part off and keep the loom and the plug with it. So it's taking a little bit longer than, than probably it should, but we're doing this more thoroughly to see what's involved. Uh, I'm throwing some pulleys aside, and all these clips are stainless steel. Uh, there's a filter capacitor here, but given that capacitors break down over the years, it's not going to be much good. We'll just throw them into dirty aluminium. Our tub of hardware is building up. We've got a couple of pieces of aluminium. So we'll no doubt add to that pile as we continue. Um, and pretty well I'm just undoing pieces randomly. It's, um, it's as I said, it's kind of fun just pulling things apart. I haven't got to this side yet. And I know there's a good board back in there somewhere. Uh, there's a, a really large, this is a shaft that the top carriage slid back and forward on. 
Uh, it may be stainless steel, it's a good size heavy shaft, so that's too good to go in the scrap. Also there's mirrors, um, which are used for when it's scanning, I guess. So, whilst I don't necessarily have a use for them, I don't think they're worthy of the rubbish bin. I think we'll be able to get you know, maybe five bucks for a selection of mir mirrors. They're double-sided. So someone's going to have some sort of quirky use for those. Uh, the only other thing is the this cable I mentioned before. I've used one of these before, and I'll do a project on one of these some stage in the future. Uh, and I'll just put the teaser out there for anyone that plays table tennis. Now, I won't go any further than that but I've made something using one of these before and it works really, really well. It's a very high tensile cable, very flexible, and it's plastic coated. So it's quite handy, but we'll touch on that in a future video. All right, so that's another half an hour. So I've invested a full hour, uh, having a bit of fun, got a bit of value, got some things I'll keep. Not a lot of scrap value as yet, but we'll do another check soon when I get a bit more time. Back to this copier now. I've had a chance to do another half hour on it. I'm trying to keep half hour blocks. So an hour and a half all up now. And we've got a big transformer out of here, which I'll um, save up with all the transformers I'll get off the low value circuit boards and we'll weigh them at the end. Uh, a couple of gas struts, which appear to be in excellent condition. I've kept the mounting brackets for each end, together with the clips. So they're going to be some good value. I don't know whether I'll keep them for something I'll use or whether I'll sell them, but they certainly worked well because the part of the printer that lifts up, sorry, the copier that lifts up was very heavy and I had to be careful taking these struts off. So they work great, that's pretty good. Little tub of bits and pieces here. I've got one solenoid off with its wiring loom. Uh, now that's gonna be handy for all sorts of things when people are mucking around inventing and creating. There's a few others as well, so I'll be saving all those. Here's a smaller type solenoid, which is um, complete again with the loom. Uh, there's a micro switch, there's bound to be more of these, and I usually fill little jars with these and sell them. I get lots of metal microwaves too. Uh, then there was a couple of magnetic latches. In fact, I think there was three in all, so I've kept them with their little metal plates. They'll be handy bits of hardware. And the counter. So. If that's the number of copies it's done, it's, uh, you know, had a big long life by the looks of that. Um, not sure what it, oh, here we go, there's a tag on the side. It's um, DC 24 volt counter. I don't know how it actually operates. It must have a, a sensor. I'll check the loom where that came from. We have a little tub of some clean steel, taking a lot more brackets off. Uh, this side of the print uh, copier I've got into, nice board there, lots of chips on it. Some of those could be really good for gold recovery. There's a removable there, it might be an EEPROM. Uh, I might take that one off because it certainly won't lower the value of the board. Uh, but these earlier 90 zero and 80 zero electronics, the chips apparently were a lot better for gold recovery, so that's a good board. Uh, the negative of doing something like this is they get pretty messy with all the toner. So it is a bit of a messy job. You wouldn't want to do it on your kitchen table. Uh, this big wiring loom continues around here. I haven't cut that off yet. And I've been taking some cogs and sprockets off this side. There is lots of clips and little um, screws to undo. It's very time consuming, as I've said, but uh, I'm throwing all the sprockets, cogs, gears and um, belts and chains into that tub. And I'll probably just sell all them in one hit. Uh, again, anyone that does a little bit of inventing or, or fabricating in their workshop will see some value in there. I probably won't keep all of them, but um, it's probably worth having a good stock of them if you if you are tinkering. There's plenty more still. So it's taking a while to get this side stripped back. Uh, the, I think what's going to happen is the side will come off and then everything out of the middle will just basically collapse. Most of the middle part is just going to be steel brackets and things. There is a big lens in there which we'll get out at some stage. And I think there would be a drive motor or two. There's a couple of little ones around here. There were electric motors, but there'll be a bigger one inside. I think that could even be the pulley for it up there. So we'll um, rescue that and the wiring loom as well because that might be a handy electric motor. So there we go. We're getting a bit more value. As uh, I said, I think in the last episode, there's not going to be a lot of scrap other than the steel. 
Uh, we'll get a few good boards, but we're going to get a lot more value, I think, out of little bits of hardware. All right, I'll get back to it next chance I get and give you another instalment. So I've had a chance to uh, spend about an hour on this copier today, um, getting right into it, as you can see, but it's certainly eating up the time, and I do have to say my enthusiasm for pulling apart copiers is starting to wane. And as you can see from this side, it's uh, rather messy. Uh, I've got the toner cartridges out, but everything's sort of coated in a black and and of various colours. I think there's some red toner. And I've put the toners down in here. I'm not going to try and pull them apart. They're just way too messy. I don't think there's much value in them. Hopefully, I think I can get away with taking them out to the e-waste crates at the transfer station because they do have wires going to them. Uh, so, a quick run round of what we've got now. I've got quite a lot of steel nice clean steel building up another bucket there there's the box that we we're working on the other days inside i've been getting a lot of these cross shafts out and uh, rollers and that sort of stuff uh, i'll probably put the, them all in one box and i think i'll try and sell them for someone that might just find it handy material we got this big lens out i don't know if it's going to have any real value it's just kind of cool to to um muck around with interesting colors through the lens it kind of magnifies but not enormous amounts so i'm not sure look i'm not going to put it in the bin but i don't know that it's a lot of value been acquiring quite a few motors here i'm not worrying about trying to save these because they're so dirty so i'm just chopping the wires off they can just go in the uh, the transformer bin at the end we'll weigh them up the big drive motor i have got out and it's a 100 volt uh, motor, 106 RPM, which is very slow. And it's also really nicely geared down. If you look at that end, compared to this end, I'm just doing it by hand. So it's a nicely geared little motor. I think that will have some value to someone. Now, just scanning around here quickly. There's a few, a couple more solenoids. There's some others in the box. There's some of these high wattage resistors. They may be handy for someone. There's a few more mirror segments. Uh, there's still quite a bit to get off, but you can see I've taken one side off and the other one's freeing up. So hopefully it doesn't take too long to finish. There's still quite a lot of um, gears and things to pull off this side. But our tub of gears is growing and our hardware here is uh, also growing. And the wiring loom I've still kind of kept in one big loom, so we've just about got that off. Our pile of clean plastic is quite substantial, and there's a bit of pile of uh, contaminated stuff and things that really don't have a category other than the rubbish bin, unfortunately. So, all right, I don't know how long it's going to take to finish off. I'll keep going at it. Um, as I said, I'm losing a bit of interest. I certainly wouldn't be keen on doing a heap of these. Scrap value is very, very low. Um, but as I said last section I, I am getting a bit of hardware um, that's the, the nice board I got off that chip in the middle there is an EEPROM uh, and there's another power board and there was a board with some small chips on it there but really not much value so we'll, um, I'll hopefully get it finished next session and then we can summarise what value we've got out of this large uh, 1990 something copier Okay, on the home stretch of this job now, it's taken a lot of time. I've done another hour, just about finished, really just framework to go. So I won't go through everything just at the moment, but um, I'll finish it off, we'll lay it all out, and uh, yeah, we'll discuss its merits, but certainly I won't be overly keen to do another one of these in the near future. Finally, the job's done. Uh, let's weigh up and have a look at what we've got. I'm quite pleased to finish this. I've got other things to do, and this has been holding me up. So, our copier. Initially, we had about 90 kilograms. And if we work on around about 10 cents per kilo for dirty shred, there's $9. Uh, I'm now leaning towards that might have been the best way to go for anyone that does sell dirty sh um, shred steel because it was a lot of work. I sunk four hours approximately into this job. Um, and scrap-wise, um, I knew right at the start it wasn't going to be viable, but I wanted to see what hardware I could get out of it. And let's see what scrap we did get. If we pan over here, there's all our clean pressing steel. A um, little bit tangly, 
but um, it's all clean and that weighs 39 kilos so scrapped out we had 39 kilos of um, steel clean steel at, let's work at around about 20 cents a kilo for that of course it's going to fluctuate when you're watching this video and where you are uh, that would be 396 uh, 780 780 for clean steel uh, we did of course end up with some rubbish uh, I've got a pile of rubbish over there which is just stuff that wasn't worth going any further just plastic little bits and contaminated stuff got a large pile of clean plastic which can be recycled now we'll scan through everything else we got um, let's stick with the scrap part for a start now on the scales at the moment we have just over two kilos of the wiring looms now it's all fairly fine wire there's no thick good wire certainly none worth stripping and uh, there's so many plugs and clips and everything on it that I'm just going to leave it as low grade wire which you can sell with the plugs on so low grade wire uh, I'm not sure what it's worth at the moment let's say a dollar a kilo uh, and we had just over two so it's only two dollars for the wire uh, now we had some electric motors and transformers and there we go um, there are going to be some other little transformers on the boards but I'm not going to really factor those in because it's barely worth getting them off uh, we'll look at the board shortly so we've got almost four kilos or a bit over three and a half I suppose but last I checked these were paying about 60 or 70 cents a kilo so let's just estimate two dollars for that so motors and transformers uh, we'll say around about 60 cents and that's going to work out around about two dollars let's keep it in round figures uh, now we have a few circuit boards we ended up with three boards there which would go as mid-grade we've got half a kilo so that's not very much either mid-grade boards um, and around about a dollar fifty a kilo I think at the moment and that's half a kilo is only what 75 cents there's a little bit of aluminium we didn't really get much more of that there was a cast alloy housing but that's only about half a kilo so aluminium we'll just group it all together uh, and we'll say a dollar a kilo so we've only got 50 cents there not much more scrap to go the low grade boards I'm not going to weigh because I don't sell them uh, it's not worth my while cutting to Melbourne because they pay so little I am going to grab the fuses off them uh, I'll leave some of the chips off there there's a few chips on the main board as well on the switch um, control board uh, really wasn't much else on here I'll just take the big transformer off so I'm not going to allow oh, that copper coil perhaps I'm not going to allow for anything for that because um, I basically just take them to the transfer station uh, there was a little bit of dirty aluminium not worth weighing up the stainless steel little brackets um, very light no real weight in there it's only a couple of cents I'm not going to worry with that either so that come that uh, totals everything I'm going to scrap now we'll look at what hardware I'm going to get and what I think it's worth just approximately and here's all the bits I've spread out that I think are of a bit of value, a bit better value than rubbish and a bit better value than scrap. Uh, before we go on to them, we'll get a total of what our scrap was. Uh, we have 5, 12, 20, 2, 4, 6, $13. So not a great deal more there than our initial $9 with four hours labour. So scrap-wise definitely not even worth considering although in saying that there would be higher value for scrap if that's all you're doing because these solenoids for example you know there's um nearly a couple of kilos of them at better than 50 cents a kilo but you know for a dollar or something for scrap i reckon they're going to be more saleable as hardware items um, i think most of them are 24 volt dc uh, they all seem to be in good operating condition so Let's start with those anyway, as far as our extra hardware value goes. Uh, I'm not sure what they're worth. I might put $10 on the box lot in the shop. 
Um, you could certainly get more for them than that in that if you had to buy new ones, I'm sure they'd be quite expensive. But I'm not worried about trying to get top dollar. I might even keep a couple for myself. And that's why I wanted to pull this apart, because um, some of the hardware I will be keeping. So let's just estimate $10. Uh, we'll go right. Uh, now all these shafts, some of them are stainless steel. Uh, some obviously aren't because they've gone a little rusty. But a lot of the rollers have... Uh, rubber impregnated onto them so you'd never sell them as clean steel or clean stainless anyway um, I didn't bother weighing it but I think there's there's ten dollars worth for someone that wanted to tinker there's they're good steel uh, someone who does fabricating and tinkering in the shed's going to get value there so I'll write down ten dollars for all the rollers etc now obviously most of you guys won't have an avenue of getting this money. I've got a second-hand shop and I can do it. Uh, tub of gears and cogs and sprockets and chains. And there's a belt there that's um, still quite flexible. Um, I'm going to put $10 on that as well. Just because it gives um, gives stock for my shop. What do we call them? Cogs and sprockets. And I'm getting a bit of a name for a shop where people can come and buy general hardware and a lot of farmers come in because they always find stuff that's handy and I like to encourage that so I'll price the stuff cheap enough that it does sell quickly and that way when my regulars come in the shop's always different now these fans they spin beautifully they've got their original brackets uh, it would probably be better if they weren't 100 volt ones you know, because someone's going to have to rig up a power supply to drive them but anyone wants to um, have some sort of blower set up or a cooler on something they've made would have no troubles working out a power supply for them. I reckon five each for those. So we'll go another ten. What else have we got? Got some high wattage resistors here. I might just hang over on to those myself. I don't think they've got a lot of value, but they might be handy for something. Uh, same with this little um, 240 volt input module with the fuses. I reckon I'll have a use for that down the track. This geared motor. I don't really know. Um, I don't remember if that was a 100 volt one or not. But it's nicely geared in there. So I think we'll... Um, no, it's a 24 volt one, that's right. I think we'll put 10 on that as well. Uh, this other one, even though it's uh, cast aluminium housing, um, because it's a 100 volt again, it's probably not going to be as usable and someone might just opt for a cheaper um, PC fan if they want something like that. I might just put that in the dollar box. I was going to put a bit more on it earlier, but we won't worry about that for now. So we won't price that because I'm hanging on to that. The geared motor we'll put 10 on. Motor. Looks like we're being very consistent with our pricing, but I like to work in round figures. Uh, a selection of mirrors, double-sided mirrors. Uh, I did have a lady ask me for a broken mirror of thick glass. Recently she was doing mosaics, so... I'm sure that would have an interest for someone. We're going to put five on those. And this tub of hardware, there was some bronze bushes. So I usually separate the springs, but I might just leave this whole tub together. I think it's a $5 tub of hardware. So those two make another 10. This will be really easy to add up. Mirrors. And hardware. It's getting a bit hard to write there, getting to the end of the page. Also, I just noticed... Here's the reason why you don't scrap out copiers. Very dirty jobs. Moving on now, we have these gas struts, which uh, I will hang on to. You never know when you need a gas strut. Uh, they both appear to work well, and I've got the mounting brackets for them. But if I was to price them, oh, look, I'd maybe put $20 on those. So we're drifting away from our $10 list. Uh, struts. Uh, we'll go 20 and this uh, motor, even though it's a 100 volt one, it's a nice low revving motor with a reduction gearbox, operates very smoothly. Again, I'm actually going to hang on to that. I think I might have a use for that. Um, and it's nice to have a well-stocked workshop full of uh, handy bits and pieces. So I'll keep that. But I would think that would be at least a $20 motor as well. As far as figures go, so motor 20 uh, what else we got left um, this 
plastic covered wire I hinted at that earlier in the video we'll be using that in a project down the track I don't think there's much value in it but I have a use for that a few other things here the feet I saved really nice heavy rubber feet they'll be handy on a project uh, same with the magnet uh, magnetic latches not sure what I'm going to do with the counter I might even put that in my junk box uh, I don't think this has got a lot of value, the lens, I might just put it in a dollar box in the shop and some kid that's interesting in optics or something might buy it. And the uh, there was a big relay, it's a 24 volt DC relay. Uh, and I did check eBay for these, they sell, but there wasn't very many second hand ones on there. But I think I'll put that in the shop for $5. So I'll add 5 to the list, I'll do that in a second. Quick scan round, have we included everything? I think we have. Um, Yep, I think that's it. So, okay, we'll uh, add the five here for the relay. And we'll get a total. Excuse the camera being on a funny angle here. I've got to hold the end of the page to write. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, $105. So you can see we've got a lot more value out of it for hardware than what we'd ever get for scrap. I think if we scrapped everything, um, sure this, this motor's gonna weigh a bit, but we're still only gonna be talking a dollar or maybe two dollars tops. Uh, the struts weigh virtually nothing. Uh, the hardware, those other bits, there's virtually no weight. We'd only add another dollar or two to the scrap. Uh, there's no weight or scrap value in plastic cogs. So scrap wise, we could probably estimate $15 return so it's only an increase of six bucks for four hours labor that's just ridiculous however if you've got a use or you've got a market as i have for the hardware you can see we can actually make a bit more money and it's verging on viable just depends you know what you want to do with your time and as you saw in this video it started off fun pulling this apart and after a few hours it was kind of just the same thing over and over again there's clips and there's screws and there's Wire, uh, wire loom to unclip and it just became a little monotonous after a while so I think that sums up this video I think we can say yes if you've got a use for the hardware or can sell it it may be worthwhile but as a general scrapper's recommendation if you see one of these big copiers on the sides of the street uh, if you're out street scrapping I'd say leave it there uh, there you go thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed this it probably went on longer than I expected but I think it's good to do these jobs because if you've never scrapped one, at least you're seeing what's in it and you can make up your own mind if you want to spend the time doing it. All right, I'm going to do a few more of these big scrapping videos soon. I've got a commercial washing machine to do soon. Uh, I did one on air conditioners a while back. So as I'm cleaning up my yard, I've got a whole series on my yard cleanup and there's lots more to do. Uh, we're getting to scrap out some things and show you guys where some value is. All right, see you in the next video.